Hey guys, so I wanted to just talk today a little bit about an article that came out from Dr. Greger on his website nutritionfacts.org, which by the way is a great website. I'm going to put the link for this article down below that I first read. You should definitely check it out. It has some really good things in there. But I just want to talk about this idea of primordial prevention and the simple seven and why it is so important to you even if you don't know about it yet. So back in 1978, the World Health Organization, the WHO, coined a term called primordial prevention. So we're talking 1978, a while ago. They came up with this term called primordial prevention. Basically, that is a strategy to prevent whole societies from experiencing epidemics of risk factors. The risk factors lead to things like death by heart attack, death by diabetes, death by cancer, kidney disease, and these types of major diseases that we have that are killing off large portions of our population prematurely. What's interesting is this strategy of primordial prevention is now even part of the American Heart Association's strategic impact goals for 2020. But what's interesting about that is that the WHO came up with this back in 1978 and the American Heart Association is now just adopting it as something that's really important. Anyways, that goes to show you that we've known about these things for a long time. We know we can prevent disease. We've known that for a long time. It's just sort of getting the ball rolling with getting people aware of this. The strategy, this primordial prevention strategy, includes determining whether you meet the criteria of the simple seven, which are seven things that generally lead to the avoidance of these risk factors and death. Think of this in your mind. Do you meet these criteria? If you meet these criteria, that means you're in a really good place. But what's really amazing and really, really, really scary is that when they actually studied people to find out how many of them actually meet the criteria for these simple seven, only one in 2,000 Americans meet all the criteria. One in 2,000. These are the, the sorts of things that you want to be striving for. These are the things that you want to be in order to be as healthful as possible and to have the best longevity and disease prevention and fighting and all the good stuff that happens in your life. If you don't meet all of these things, it means that at some point, something's probably gonna happen that's related to your lack of compliance with that particular one. Let me tell you what these seven things are. The first one is that you do not smoke. Of course, we all know that one already. The second one is not being overweight. So overweight, it's sort of a fluctuating scale. It's hard to know whether you're overweight or not because it depends on who you ask. And the sort of uh, government recommendations say that you should have a BMI, meaning your body mass index, which is a height to weight sort of ratio, between 18.5 and 25. Most Americans do not fit this scale anyways. Dr. Furman, who is a little bit more stringent about these things based on research and scientific things, <laughs> he says between 18.5 and 22.5 is actually what we should be shooting for. It's a range though. What's nice is when someone realizes what the range is, they always say, oh, I, I have more muscle or my bones are too big or you know, we tend to be heavier in my family. Someone, they always have objections in their mind of why they can't be that thin or they can't be that healthy. So I personally am between a 22, well, 21 and a half and 22.5, sort of depending on the five or seven pounds that I, you know, go back and forth all the time. So that's within the healthy weight range. It's interesting, like if you actually look at your height and what your weight should be, I bet you anything, the first time you look at it, you're like, oh, I can never be that thin, no way, that's terrible, right? But what's interesting is when you sort of start this nutritarian path and you follow the nutritarian diet, it becomes more and more within your reach to be in that range. So don't discount it yet, but so not being overweight, those are the sort of things you're shooting for when you don't want to be overweight. And just so you know, as far as BMI goes, my height is 5'2 and a half, and the half is very important. And an 18.5 to a 22.5 BMI, that's between like 105 pounds and 125 pounds. So that's a good 20 pound sort of range there that I could be. And right now, I don't think I look too skinny. I'm at the top end of the range. If I went down to about 105, I might look too skinny. Not sure. It depends on you know, what it looks like when I get there. But that, it's a very forgiving range actually, 20 pounds to sort of be in that. It's not normal for what most Americans usually do because they fluctuate and continue to get higher and higher and higher. But if you're within that healthy weight range, 20 pounds is is plenty to account for muscle or, you know, being, being a, a bigger type person or whatever it is. And you can still be in that healthy range whether you're at the high or that low end of the spectrum. The third thing is being very active, meaning that you walk at least 22 minutes per day. There's no sort of guidelines on anything else, just 22 minutes per day, which 
according to me, that's not very active, but if you do it every day and you do at least 22 minutes, that's within guidelines. So how many of us can say that we exercise every single day? I try. When I'm really on, I do for the most part. I do walk almost every day and then I do these massive hikes that sort of I think account for the days that I'm not walking. It doesn't actually seem like that much to do. 22 minutes a day, I think most people can do that. Eating a few fruits and veggies per day. I remember much of my life I didn't have any fruits and vegetables. So just uh, having a few more per day, that's, or I mean, just having some per day <laughs> is actually not a very difficult thing to do. Just have to plan ahead and get going. Also having below average cholesterol. My cholesterol is very, very good. I just had my blood tested. Having normal blood pressure, same. Blood pressure is really low. It's good. It's like a, around 100 over 60. And um, it fluctuates depending on stress levels and stuff, but still it's at a good level. And then having normal blood, blood sugars. And I just had my blood tested as well, and my blood sugars are perfect. So I happen to meet all of these factors, which is really awesome. But... I also have been working at it for years to get here. <laughs> years, 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 years to get here. I definitely, there were many of these factors. I used to smoke a little bit when I was younger socially. Um, I was kind of always a little bit overweight. I've never had a super, super strict every single day exercise. There was a long period in my life where I didn't eat fruits and vegetables. Um, I did have high cholesterol or, or borderline cholesterol at one point. My blood pressure was higher at when I was in my early 20s. My, I don't know about my blood sugars. I don't remember getting those tested before, but now I know that they're well within range. So anyhow, that's all I want to say about this. Just something to keep in mind. These are the things you want to shoot for if you want to prevent those larger, you know, nutrition deficiency related diseases and smoking and other factors related issues down the line in order to have the highest um, level of health for your life going forward. So keep them in mind, maybe write them down, put them on the wall or put them on your fridge. These things that you can start to knock off one at a time. Maybe you can't do them all at once, but you could quit smoking or you could start eating a few fruits and vegetables every day or you could just go for a walk every morning. Um, just 22 minutes, guys. That's, anyone can do that. You can find time for that. Even if it's just walking from the car to wherever you're going, park a little further, do these extra things to really make that work in your life and strive for the best health possible always. And I wish you the best of health. Thank you so much for watching this video. Pass it along to someone who might be interested in it. Um, we have to support each other and help each other get healthy and help educate each other as well. So subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like this video. Also, you can check out my daily vlogs where I talk about every single thing I eat every day. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.